Hello everyone, my name is Vishal Verma, Assistant Professor, Chitkara College of Hospitality Management, Chitkara University, Punjab. Today we are going to discuss keywords and glossaries of front office which are used in the hotels on an everyday basis. These keywords and the glossaries are considered important for every single student who will be appearing for their examination or they, they, they might need to appear for an interview. So without wasting much time, let's start with the keywords and glossaries. Number one is market segmentation and target market. What is the difference between these two? So if you talk about market segmentation first, market segmentation is a process of identifying markets or groups within a, big, within a bigger area. Maybe we can, we can take an example about a business travelers. If one need to uh, attract or capture business travelers, one need to uh, push in into multinational companies. They'll be, the, they'll, they'll be an area from where we can cater the business travelers. So market segmentation is basically you need to divide the market. You need to segment the market in order to capture the clients. Number two is the target market. Target market is basically about targeting the market. It is just the group of that potential buyers who has the potential to pay you. So in case uh, a sales manager is aware of that, yes, that is my company. That is that, uh, that company or a multinational company who has the potential to pay you. I'll be sending my sales team to that place, to that company, to have more and more people who, who can come over at the hotel and pay me. So basically, uh, it is just about targeting those people in order to secure the business. Next is the cutoff date. Cutoff date is basically a deadline or a reminder for a hotel where we, the hotel, we, the reservation team, we always uh, give a deadline or a reminder to them, to the companies or to the travel agents in case they have any of the tentative rooms which they have which they have reserved at the hotel. So it's basically a, a timeline for them that they need to else give us an advance, they else need to confirm it, else the rooms will be cancelled without any prior notice. So this is a cutoff date which is always being uh, announced to them, which being emailed to them well in advance. So this is very, very important for the reservation team. Next is about the reconfirmation. This is a this is a task. This is a process which is being used by every single hotel in the industry. So the word recon has come from a reconfirmation only. This is basically a procedure where every reservation executive need to reconfirm their bookings. It doesn't matter the booking is from a multinational company or maybe from a travel agent or maybe from a walk-in or maybe for an, uh, uh, not from walk-in, sorry, maybe from, uh, from an FIT or any other source. We, the reservation associate, our responsibility is just and just to recon that booking with that person. That is very important. So in order to reconfirm the booking, we can also check with the person in case they uh, they want the hotel to arrange for a cab, a hotel's car. Maybe we, they need a pickup from some place, from office or basically some other place. So this is basically a reconfirmation that yes, they'll be turning up to the hotel. In case they want us to cancel a booking, we can also cancel that, keeping the cancellation policy in mind. All right, that's again very, very important. Next is about the overbooking. Now overbooking, we can also uh, term it as for some hotels, it is basically uh, a model or maybe a term where they can think over that yes, it is a plus factor for a hotel where their rooms or maybe they can have more and more business. But on the other side, it can be a drawback also for the hotels where, so, so basically in order to overbook the rooms, one need to forecast their room forecast their business properly so in case if you have a look at the picture properly uh, there is basically a hotel manager and he's being surrounded by the guest who are requesting for their rooms there could be a possibility someone is holding a booking but it's not uh, being given a room his room has been uh, allotted to someone else now there could be numerous reasons for that so the best part about that is one need to forecast the rooms the stayovers the understays all these things need to keep it in mind before um, before we overbook the rooms because if we if we think about the odd scenario in case we have overbooked the room and we are unable to give a room to the person who's carrying a confirmed reservation that end of the day we need to bounce that room to a sister concern hotel which is again a concern which is again a drawback for that hotel right because end of the day th that person might go on to the social media handles and put a negative feedback for the hotel so we need to keep all these factors in our mind Next is about the extra bed and its policy. Now there are three pictures given in the slide. It talks about an extra bed. Now in most of the hotels, extra bed is always and always on chargeable basis. That price varies from 1000 to 1500 or to 2000 rupees for that. 
it's it's basically an extra bed supplement bed which is being added to to another bed which is which is already there in the room the another name for an extra bed is a roll away bed so why it's called roll away bed if you can see in the third picture the bed can easily be rolled up and someone can it, it can easily be dragged to nearby pantry which is there on the floor and the picture which is there in the middle it is basically for an infant or for a toddler who who is normally uh, who always comes along with the parents so most of the hotel they do not charge for them but some hotel they charge a meager amount of 500 rupees so that is about the extra benefits policy next is about the rates very very important rack rate is also considered as in published tariff this is the highest rate of the hotel most of the hotel they normally um, do not charge any for guest above than the rack rate so for example if a hotel has three categories maybe you can uh, assume it as a superior premium or a suite and if a rack rate for a superior room is 10000 rupees we cannot sell a superior room more than 10000 rupees right we can oversell that we can oversell the other categories but we need to keep it in mind always that we should not sell more than its rack rate and again rack rate is considered as rate which is always being sold uh, for its walk in so basically we are always being prompted that we need to do upselling being in front of his associates or being a reservation associates we always need to do upselling with anyone who's turning up a hotel except those coming from multinational companies or the travel agents because they have the contracted rate with the hotel so this is considered as in very important for us because we need to push for an upselling with them next is the bar bar is considered as in best available rate this is a rate which always keep on varying as per the occupancy in case hotel is having an occupancy of 50% in the morning the hotel manager might think of and they might prefer to drag a rate a bit but the moment rooms start filing it up the rooms getting filled up in the hotel the occupancy gets fluctuates the rates gets hiked up a bit so this is called bar best available rate which always varies which always fluctuates as per the occupancy the moment occupancy goes up rates will go up accordingly but again we need to keep it in the same thing again bar can only exceed up till the rack rate we cannot sell any of the room above than the rack rate this is very very important next is about the layover and the stopover this is very very important most of the people they always get confused between layover and the stopover layover is basically when there's a problem with the flight a flight is about to take off but cannot take off due to a bad weather maybe a fog or maybe there is a problem there is a technical glitch in the flight and a flight cannot take off due to that reason that is considered as a layover and in that layover airport representative is the one who is responsible who who has to act as a sales manager and that airport representative need to have good relations with respective airlines and being a sales manager that airport representative need to try and pick up that business and need to take all of them all of the passengers at a nearby hotel but because at end of the day that respective airlines holds the responsibility they are the ones who are on the paying side they need to take care of their lodging and the moment weather gets cleared or the technical glitch in the flight gets cleared they uh, they are sent back to the airport and then they need to fly to their regular destination this is what layover is whereas if you can see on the stopover stopover is basically a halt between your journey so if in case someone has a flight from delhi to uh, uh, say maybe say that us or canada so that halt within that flight it is considered as in stopover so the flights takes a halt at a midway for 3 to 4 hours 5 to 6 hours so that halt is considered as a stopover flights need to be there for a while you can be there uh, at a duty free shops at the lounges and the moment there's an announcement for the next flight you need uh, the plane gets changed and you can also move to the another plane this is basically called as a term as a stopover next is a group and a block now this is a picture if you can see that in the picture this is a term which relates to a party or a group or a family who has come together they could be any occasion they could be a part of a wedding party they could be a part of a, a meeting consentive conference or a convention the another name of group is block so this is basically considered as a, a people family members or maybe from any of the companies or a travel agent who has come along to stay together right now in most of the hotels if you talk about the indian hotels maybe in north india uh, june and july is a time where the hotels go lean 
they do not enjoy good occupancy hotel manager sales manager always try to pick up the groups at a good rate at a, at a competitive and a discounted rate where we, if you talk about the month of september october and november these are considered the high season peak season for the hotel and these are these are the time when lots of marriages happens in north indian hotels hotel managers always try to pick up business from these groups and they always try to give them offer them a rate on a competitive rate and this is basically one of a add on feature to enjoy a competitive rate and uh, to have a good revenue that's it for now today we'll be coming up with the more and more keywords and the glossaries and we'll be continuing further in the next videos so thank you for that i hope you enjoyed it have a good day thank you